In this lesson, we will discuss the basics of drawing Lewis-Stratz structures, and then in class, we will explore this topic further. First, what are Lewis-Stratz structures? You can see a few examples uh, pictured below here. And we use element symbols to represent the nucleus and the core electrons. And then we draw the valence electrons. And they can either be shared between two atoms in a covalent bond, or uh, they can be by themselves. And we draw our electrons in pairs uh, because of the idea that there are two electrons allowed per orbital. Shared pairs of electrons can be represented just with a pair of dots, like this, or with a dash, like this. And then unshared pairs of electrons, or lone pairs of electrons, are always written as pairs of dots, like these. Now let's discuss the rules for how we draw a Lewis dot structure. By the way, Lewis dot structures are also referred to as dot structures, Lewis structures, or Lewis dot diagrams. All of those uh, refer to the same thing. So the first thing you need to do is determine the number of valence electrons that you are going to draw in your Lewis dot structure. Valence electrons are the only electrons that are involved in bonding. Remember, they are the farthest away from the nucleus, so they can interact with other atoms. And just to review, um, we're going to be looking at elements from our main group, uh, elements on the periodic table, groups 1a through 8a, and the group number uh, matches up with the number of valence electrons in that group. Now because we are going to be looking at uh, covalent bonds, we are mostly going to be focusing on our nonmetals with high numbers of valence electrons, and that would be shared uh, between the two atoms. Once you have determined the total number of valence electrons for all of the atoms within the compound, you're going to choose a central atom. Sometimes if there are only two atoms within our molecule, there will be no central atom, but if there is going to be one, the least electronegative atom is the central atom. And remember, fluorine is the most electronegative atom, so you might be looking at uh, an atom that is the farthest away from fluorine. If carbon is in your molecule, it will always be the central atom. And if hydrogen is in your molecule, it will never be the central atom. Once you have found your central atom, you are going to arrange the rest of the atoms around that central atom so that we obey the octet rule. The octet rule is another reason why atoms form chemical bonds. Atoms will gain, lose, or share valence electrons so that they have an octet in their highest occupied energy level. So, 8 for octet. If you remember, the other reason why atoms form chemical bonds is to lower their potential energy. And finally, we're going to draw in our lone pairs and shared pairs of electrons so that each atom has its octet, has eight electrons. We will always draw these dots in pairs, again, uh, because electrons um, come in pairs in orbitals. So let's put all of these steps together and draw a Lewis-Stratz structure for a chlorine molecule. We have two chlorine atoms. Chlorine is in group 7A, and so each chlorine atom will have seven valence electrons. So seven plus another seven for the other atom adds up to 14 valence electrons total. This molecule will not have a central atom because there are only two atoms. So I'm going to use the element symbols for chlorine to represent each atom. And then there will be a shared pair in between for the covalent bond. You can also use two dots. I usually use the dash. And then the lone pairs of electrons are always drawn in as dots. And we want to follow this octet rule. So for the chlorine on the right, it's sharing two electrons with the other chlorine. And then therefore would need six more electrons to obtain its octet. So we'll draw these in pairs, just like this. And then chlorine has its octet. And we'll do the same thing for the other chlorine. 
it's sharing two electrons with the first chlorine and so then therefore needs eight and would require six more electrons and if you count these up when you're done you'll see that there are 14 valence electrons total so there's two here four six eight ten twelve fourteen and that one's done now let's work on a more complicated example carbon tetrachloride CCL4 so carbon is in group 4a it would have four valence electrons and then the chlorines again in group 7a with seven valence electrons and then this time there are four of them so seven times four plus the four from the carbon this adds up to 32 valence electrons total. This molecule will have a central atom. It's carbon. Carbon is always central if it's in the molecule. Place the chlorines around the carbon. And then draw in your shared pairs. Carbon now has its octet. It has access to eight electrons. And we want to do the same thing for chlorine. And that's 32 valence electrons total. We're not really concerned with which electrons belong to which atom. We're just treating this as a pool of 32 electrons that we assign to the atoms. Electrons are actually redistributed when atoms form chemical bonds. And finally, we're going to draw the Lewis dot structure for phosphorus trifluoride. Phosphorus is in group 5A, has five valence electrons, and there's only one of them. Fluorine has seven valence electrons because it's in group 7A, and there are three of those, so that's a total of 26 valence electrons. The less electronegative element here is phosphorus, and so we'll put that in the center. And then we will arrange our fluorines around the phosphorus. When I draw in my shared pairs of electrons between phosphorus and fluorine, phosphorus only has access to six electrons. So to have its octet, it's going to have a lone pair right here and then we're going to give the fluorines their octets. Uh, right now they each have access to two electrons so they would need six more to have access to eight. And that is the Lewis dot structure for phosphorus trifluoride. So now hopefully you know the basics of how to draw a Lewis dot structure. If not, please go back and rewatch this video.